Hello, my name is Patrick Dunn. I'm a 17-year-old junior at St. Ignatius College Prep in San Francisco. I'm speaking with you today to share my story. It's a good story, not because it's my story, but because the life could save may be your own. So please stay tuned. If you're a student at SI, there's an added bonus. At the end of this video, I'll tell you how to get a free dress pass in less than two minutes. So here it goes. I had a loving family, lots of friends, school was pretty easy, and I loved sports. Like many boys, my interest in sports started with soccer, and then I added baseball, skiing, swimming, tennis, basketball, golf, and a host of other athletic pursuits. Virtually every day, I played some type of sport, and over the years, was rewarded with many trophies across a number of sports. I was on top of the world and dreamed of playing basketball in college. The then, tragedy struck. Not for me, but for a boy about my age who died while playing sports. Apparently, he had a previously undetected medical issue that was not life-threatening, if it was discovered earlier. My parents were horrified, and thus a seed was planted, and a nagging fear started growing within my dad. You see, my dad loved watching me play sports. But still, he knew he had inherited a genetic heart disorder, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM, and was worried I or my brother, who was also very athletic, may have inherited it. So in late 2004, when I was 9 years old, my parents had us tested. It seemed totally unnecessary, as my brother Michael and I both felt great and were getting stronger each day. Sadly, an echocardiogram revealed minor HCM obstruction for me. Not too much, but I had to respond by dropping competitive sports. All except for my favorite, basketball. Life went on, but then two things happened. First, my parents went to a conference sponsored by the HCM Association, or HCMA. At the conference, they got a whole lot smarter. They learned that HCM is actually pretty common, impacting 1 in 500 people. This makes me wonder if three students at SI that statistically should have HCM even know if they have a heart disorder. This knowledge is especially important at SI since we are into sports and HCM is the number one cause of heart attacks in young athletes, causing nearly half of all cases of sudden cardiac arrests. Unfortunately, it's a myth to think HCM only harms athletes. HCM is non-discriminatory. It attacks all types of people and both genders, killing about 700 young Americans each year. The second thing that happened was the septum in my heart was growing. The width of my septum, the wall that separates the two lower chambers in the heart, had grown from 13 millimeters in 2006 to 20 millimeters in 2007 and then to 28 millimeters in 2008. At 30 millimeters, cardiologists often suggest an implantable defibrillator. I was getting close. So the next year during basketball season, instead of playing, I helped coach. We didn't win the county championships like the year before, and it felt weird not playing, but I was still in the game, having fun, and learning how to lead and adapt. By now, you should be wondering, if HCM is so common, do I have it? How can I tell? Fortunately, if you listen to your body, there are signs you can feel. For example, are you short of breath? Do you have chest pains or feel heart palpitations? Do you seem tired all the time? Unfortunately, these symptoms are not unique, which can lead to a misdiagnosis with you or your parents thinking it's asthma, or you're depressed, or you just need more sleep. In, in fact, I hadn't felt any of these symptoms when I was first diagnosed. My parents had a doctor look at me due to the hereditary nature of the HCM gene, which is transmitted to 50% of the children. For a more thorough preliminary assessment, HCMA publishes a 5-minute questionnaire to help identify the potential risk of HCM it provides easy-to-use guidelines to follow if you answer yes or unsure to any of the 25 questions. The HCMA was founded in 1996 by Lisa Salzberg, who was diagnosed with HCM at the age of 12. Lisa has lost five family members to the illness, but not one since she committed her life to building HCM awareness. So please, if you are uncertain, take a look at the HCMA website. If after talking with your doctor, you find you have HCM, please don't panic. Like me, you too can live a long and productive life, and the methods to preventing a heart attack from HCM are many, but they all start with knowledge and action. For me, that means taking daily medication and staying hydrated. Pretty simple, right? For you, it may mean an implantable device, but you'll never know if you don't take responsibility for your own health. The key is, don't panic, just act. Alright, now there's still one more topic left before we get to the free dress day, and that is what to do if somebody nearby experiences a heart attack. There are four simple steps to an AED drill. I call it an AED drill since AED, or Automated External Defibrillator, is a simple, easy-to-use piece of equipment 
that can deliver an electric shock to the heart to stop an erratic heartbeat and allow a normal rhythm to resume. The one you're looking at now is made by Philips. If you think someone is having a heart attack, the first step is to stay calm, recognize the situation, and call for help, including 911. Also, send someone to get the closest AED. If you are an SI student, do you know where the six on-site AEDs are located on campus? Once you've called for help, please begin chest compressions to the beat of staying alive by the Bee Gees, or at about 100 beats per minute. Continue with the compressions until the AED arrives. Then simply follow the verbal instructions that are built into the AED. If it's an AED by Philips, simply push the on-off button or pull the green handle and the AED will verbally walk you through the process or you can watch a short demonstration online. Lastly, be sure to send someone to meet the ambulance and guide the medical technicians to the right location. AED drills take courage. And perhaps the most important point to remember is that although you should stay calm, speed counts since every minute that the person is experiencing a heart attack reduces their chance of survival by nearly 10%. For a demonstration, please visit one of the websites. To summarize, I hope you learned four important facts today. One, HCM is among the most common heart diseases, impacting one in 500 people in the U.S. Two, known as the silent killer, HCM is the leading cause of sudden cardiac arrest, especially for young athletes. But there are steps you can take to help protect yourself. Most importantly, stop and consider whether you show signs of having HCM, including in your family line, and if so, to start talking with your personal doctor. Most exploratory tests are non-invasive and don't hurt. Trust me. 3. A successful AED drill can save a life and includes only four simple steps. Call for help start chest compressions, learn to use an AED, and send someone to lead the medical team to the patient. And lastly, learn where the AEDs in your life are, so if you're ever called on to save a friend, you'll be ready. Thank you for listening to the first few chapters of my story. I would like to personally dedicate this presentation to the memory of Peter Antonini, a former SI student who'd passed away due to an undetected case of HCM, and Mitchell Cole, a professional soccer player and friend of mine who passed away a few months ago. With your help in increasing HCM awareness, hopefully we can prevent future deaths from occurring. If you would like to learn more about Peter, please refer to the URL website on this slide. Or if you'd like to share your story, please contact me at pdunnehcm at yahoo.com or consider logging on to the HCMA website that includes a great guest forum and attracts over 200,000 people a year. And now, for SI students that want a free dress pass, please be aware of the 10 questions you will need to answer. All you need to do is stop by the HCM table in the student center during your lunch period or the connecting third or sixth period and complete the test there. Nine out of 10 will earn free dress and you have unlimited tries so you can review the video if you test poorly and earn the free dress pass the following day. Good luck. In closing, I would like to thank the entire St. Ignatius community for helping me increase HCM awareness, especially the vice principals of academics and student affairs. Ms. Carol Nikolai and Mr. Bobby Gavin, and Mr. Gamble, who helped coordinate the production and editing of this video. Of course, we should also thank our principal, Mr. Patrick Ruff, and the Jesuit tradition for setting the standard in helping all SI students grow into healthy adults capable of nurturing the mind, body, and spirit of ourselves and those around us. Thank you, and have a good day.